Hello, it's the Kombucha Mama, Hannah Crum. I am here today to talk about making elderberry syrup. So um, as you probably already know, nature provided a, an amazing medicine chest for us known as herbs and plants and all kinds of things. So since the dawn of time, humans have had a relationship with mother nature and the earth and all that she has to provide for us in order to help support our immune systems naturally. Now, the neat thing about all of these herbs and um, plants and flowers and berries is that they also have specific uses. Just like when we're taking either over-the-counter drugs or pharmaceuticals from prescribed to us by a doctor, we have very specific rules about how we take them, when we take them, what we take them with. So nature is no different. It's just that that wisdom tends to be codified in different places. So you're gonna to wanna to find some really great books on herbalism and herbal nutrition in order to help you understand what herbs are gonna work best for your body, what's gonna support you, what's the right amount to consume. But again, because we are also from Mother Nature, listening to our bodies, trusting our guts, and really paying attention to that biofeedback we receive is going to help us find the plants that nurture us, that support us. And so today, we're talking about elderberry syrup. Now, the neat thing about elderberry syrup is that it can also be used to flavor kombucha, water kefir, jun, even milk kefir. Um, it's really delicious, and then you can also pour it over ice with a little uh, sparkling water to act as a soda. I also really enjoy warming it up and enjoying a hot mug of elderberry. Once it cools down, I dash in a little bit of kombucha, and it's absolutely delicious. It soothes the throat, it warms the body up, and of course the, the great thing about elderberries and why they're so important this time of year is that they help support upper respiratory health during cold season. So a lot of us of course we're trying to stay well, we're trying to uh, make sure our immune systems have all the nutrients and energy they need in order to protect ourselves, our force field, and keep everything working, and elderberry syrup is a great thing for you to do. So we have these really easy to use kits one comes with organic cane sugar, and the other comes with raw honey. So you get to choose which you want to use. Now you might be thinking, I'm trying to control the amount of sugar I'm putting into my body. Why am I using sugar? What is this sugar for? Whether it's in the form of honey or organic cane sugar. And sugar is a vital nutrient. I know, it sounds crazy, because we also think of it as something that can be uh, dangerous for us if it's overconsumed. But again, that's like everything in life. It's all about the proper dosing and what we're using it for. So in the case of making these syrups, the sugar has a very specific function. First of all, it's a preservative. It's going to prevent uh, mold and different things from growing in the syrup. It's gonna give it a much longer life. Also, it's the teaspoon of sugar that helps the medicine go down. Sometimes our herbal friends, as great as they are for us, they taste, well, medicinal. And so that flavor can be something that doesn't really resonate or is difficult for other people to enjoy. So by having a little bit of sugar in the right places with our supportive herbs, that's allowing our bodies to absorb those nutrients pleasantly, and then we can reap the benefits of them in our body. So I'm gonna open these up and show you what's in here, and then we'll start to make some syrup. So we're going to um, be using elderberries. The nice thing about our kits is that uh, they have everything you need to make two cups or one pint of elderberry syrup. Now you can buy pre-made elderberry syrups online, they just tend to cost a little bit more because, well, they're pre-made for you. So um, here is four ounces of elderberries. That's a quarter pound. Uh, so elderberries are also something, if you live in an area that has elderberries, you might be able to wild harvest. Um, certainly here in Los Angeles, I'm gonna pour these in. <laughs> you're going to find a lot of elderberry trees. And there are cautions against consuming the fresh berries and the twigs because again, like a lot of plants and medicines, they can contain trace amounts of cyanide. So we wanna make sure we're consuming them properly. And so one of the proper ways to consume elderberry is by cooking it. And also of course, by not including um, any of the bark or the stem of the plant. Now there are some preparations where you might do that, but you probably wanna work with a uh, educated herbalist in order to do that. But what we're making at home is perfectly safe 
has been used for centuries, millennia, and is also really delicious. So I've just poured my elderberries into my pot and I'm picking out just little bits of um, twigs and stuff that I see in here. That's normal when you're working with herbal and plant preparations for um, little bits of uh, excess to be present. So I just took out the big pieces. It's so easy, we've made this super easy for you. So in this case, we're using our chai spice. So chai spice is a blend of all kinds of really great things. So we're gonna have ginger, cinnamon, orange peel, allspice, cloves, all mixed up for you in a ready to use packet. Now you certainly could source your own herbs or try some of our different herbs and add them in. So for example, you could take some of the root beer ingredients, sarsaparilla, wintergreen, vanilla bean. You could try things um, maybe that are more specific to you or for other issues you're trying to work with and add those, hibiscus, something like this. So this is super easy. It's just elderberries, chai spice, four cups of water, going all right into our pot. And this is it. Really, this is it. <laughs> no, actually what we're gonna do next is boil this on the stove, or simmer it rather. So we waited, um, we put the berries and everything on the stove, and now it is at a right proper boil. And because we used four cups of water to start, but we wanna get it down to two cups, we're just gonna let it simmer. I'm gonna drop the heat down on here so it's simmering for 45 minutes to an hour or until it's about half the amount of liquid in here. So. We're just, it's gonna fill the house with a delicious smell as um, everything simmers. So it's kind of like a little potpourri. We've been simmering the mixture now for about an hour. And we can see there's a real difference from where we started to where it is now. That means the liquid has started to absorb into the berries and the different herbs and spices are in here. Part of the reason we let it sit for so long, not only because it smells amazing, but because that's how we're extracting the nutrients from the spices. This is called de decoction. Um, so decoction is when we um, use uh, boiling or simmering water over an extended period of time to extract the nutrients from whatever we're going to consume. But we don't want to consume all these uh, barks and berries, so now we're going to strain it. I have here set up my pitcher or a bowl, a sieve, and then there's a piece of cheesecloth we include. So you could just use the sieve by itself, but the cheesecloth will add an extra layer so we capture more of the small bits so they stay out of our flavor. So. Just grabbing this off the stove. Of course, it's hot, so be careful and use the proper safety materials. Um, I'm gonna now pour this beautiful liquid and berries into the sieve here and the cheesecloth. Oh, there we go. We've gotten as much as we can out of there. Now we're just gonna take a wooden spoon and we're gonna press as much liquid. So I'm gonna hold this to make sure it's stable and steady. And we're just pressing, just pressing down on here to extract as much berry juice, as much of the good stuff from our elements as we can. Now you notice we haven't added our sugar or honey yet. We're gonna do that next. And when you add it, it's really dependent upon are you using the sugar or the raw honey? So right now our liquid is really warm and if we want to maintain the health benefits of the raw honey, we're going to want to wait for this to cool before we stir in the raw honey. So we'll probably give it, you know, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, so it feels a little bit cooler to the touch. For raw honey, we're trying to keep it below 108 so we don't kill off all of those organisms or pasteurize the honey unintentionally. Now for sugar, of course, we want to get it to dissolve and so you can see I'm just sort of mashing here in a variety of ways. I'm not seeing a lot of juice coming out, so that's really my goal. Now, this stuff is great and we can compost it. It smells amazing. There are probably other uses for it, but I personally just put it right into the compost and give it back to mother nature. Um, so I'm just gonna put this aside. And now we're going to, um, so we have we have our syrup here, so we can see it's a half a quart or two cups, which is what our aim was. Um, because this is really hot, I'm gonna go ahead and use the sugar just to show you that process. But if you were doing the honey, you would just give this, you know, 15 minutes to cool down, just so it's not um, as warm as it was taking it right off the stove. 
And, you know, like all of the magic things we do here, whenever we're stirring things or mixing things, we're also holding an intention of health and healing. So, you know, how are these elderberries going to support our body? What is the highest vibration of health that we can hold for ourselves? What is an image of the healthiest you you can imagine? This is why we make these potions. This is why we ferment all the things. Is because we know we want to have that healthy relationship. And because these are living beings, because we as nature already have a relationship to nature, just communing, right? What is communing? It's coming together. It's putting intention and energy. And so just by communing with these elements, your food when you're cooking it, right? That secret ingredient that is missing from so many things is love. But we have the chance to add it now. So I can hear that all and I can feel that my sugars dissolve. So now I'm going to store this in a clean jar. So right now it doesn't seem very syrupy because it's very warm. But once this cools, it will have more of that syrup-like texture. So I'm just going to put it into a clean jar. And then I have some delicious water kefir I'm going to use to flavor this with. So you can flavor it in the moment, like as you're drinking it, or you can flavor it in advance and do a secondary fermentation. Let me go grab that water kefir. So I just wanted to show one of my favorite ways to enjoy this. Um, I could flavor this in advance or I can drink it, um, or I can flavor it at the time of consumption. This here is water kefir. And you notice how it's lighter in color from kombucha. And you can even see it has some different types of yeast and stuff at the bottom there. Um, it will also get fizzy. I've had this one at room temperature, so it's not as fizzy, especially because it's winter. But you can see the bubbles starting to rise up and the little dancing kefir flowers in there. So I'm just gonna pour this over a little bit of ice. Sometimes I skip the ice, just depends. And there's a delicious glass. And then I'm gonna put some of my syrup in there. And so um, a little bit always goes a long way. I'm just going to use a couple spoonfuls because it's just going to give this keeper a delicious flavor profile. All right, did I mess mention I'm a little bit of a messy cook? Um, this is why you don't leave me in the kitchen by myself. Um, it's also why fermentation is perfect for me because it's one of those things where you can be a little bit messy and it's still going to turn out great. So here is my very delicious elderberry water keeper cooler. Let's have a sip. Oh yeah, that is so good. So not only do we have the delicious flavor of the water keeper, but the elderberry syrup, that little bit of sugar, it's making everything taste so good. Now just be careful and don't make a mess everywhere like I did. All right, well, here's to your health, and we'll see you next time. If you want more books on herbalism, check out the bookshop link in our profile. And, of course, stay tuned for more videos. Like, comment, share. We love uh, to see everybody interacting and are excited to see how your elderberry syrup is being used. So drop us a little info in the comments, and we'll see you next time.